All right, guys, we're back again with another great episode of PFREI. I'm your host, Fuquan Bilal. Today we have Sam Print. So, Sam, tell the guests uh, a little bit about your background and what you do in the real estate world, and then we'll jump right into the interview. I want to thank you for taking the time and coming on the show and sharing, sharing with us your knowledge. Awesome. Talk a little bit about your background. I appreciate you having me on for sure. Um, yeah, so right now I kind of have three real estate companies that I own and involved in. One is my rental portfolio. I have 110 doors, um, 57 single family houses, and 43, I think is the math, 40, no, 53, 53 multifamily doors, a couple multifamilies. Um, so we have a team that manages those in house. And I also um, run a flipping company. We buy, we bought 168 houses last year. Our goal is to buy closer to 200 this year. So we buy um, 100, between 150 and 200 houses a year. We wholesale probably 100, 120 of those. We rehab, um, you know, 30 to 50. And then the other we kind of keep in our rental portfolio. And then the other company that I just uh, started, I guess about a year ago, um, uh, Faster Freedom is our education company. We have a YouTube channel we just launched, an Instagram page. We're getting into the whole uh, mastermind coaching and boot camp webinar kind of thing. So kind of kind of take what I learned from those other two businesses and help other people get achieve financial freedom through real estate is kind of actually the end game and help people you know get to get to the point to where their monthly income from real estate exceeds their expenses is kind of the the motto we go with. Wow, that's a lot, man. Wow. <laughs> I'm looking for gray hairs. I'm looking for stress marks and all that. None of that is there. So that, that means systems and processes must be in place. So let's that's jump true. into that a little bit. When did you get started? I mean, how long you been in a business? Uh, so I got started. I bought my first rental house in 2014. So I had a, a full-time job. My partner, Lucas, um, uh, who's not on this call, he had a full-time job as well. We each were starting a family and we liked our W-2 jobs. Um, they were okay. I actually liked mine. He didn't like his at all, but we wanted more than that. I didn't want to work for someone else for 35, 40 years, um, you know, retire. I, you know, had a good job. I could have retired when I was 55 and retired well and gave some money to my kids, but I, I wanted more than that. I wanted to create generational wealth. I wanted to create generational freedom where I could hand, hand things down to my kids and their kids and their kids and kind of you know, create more than just working, you know, working nine to five every day and then, you know, retiring and, and golfing. But I wanted to create something, I had that entrepreneurial itch that wasn't getting scratched, um, you know, behind a computer and I was in a sales job and going and talking to people. I wanted to create my own. So that that's kind of was the, the genesis of starting to slowly build a rental portfolio. Like I said, bought one house in 2014, you know, a handful probably in 2015 and then obviously started to have, have ramped it up since then pretty heavily and then went full-time into 2000 in 2018 went full-time to real estate so i've been doing that for a couple of years now so that's that's kind of my path um i i like that path honestly i i know a lot of the pundits will say jump in head first you know two feet in cannonball into it i kind of strategically built up a portfolio and got things in place to when i did leave my other job i wasn't you know you know wasn't cutting my income in half i was you know able to accelerate my real estate income yeah, that's good, man. I mean, it's it's a fast acceleration point for you. I mean, just jumping in with one property at 2014. I mean, you know, with everything that's going on now, how are you being affected by it? I mean, we're in COVID-19. Um, you know, I, I went through the downturn of 2008, you know, lost a couple million dollars, had to start all over again. It's really hard coming back from that. And I, I, I try to make sure, and, and we'll see, that I put things into place coming back around one block at a time. So if that storm ever came back, that I would be prepared because myself, I was just doing flips. I had no income from rentals. And, you know, I had to learn how to become a landlord, which I hated because I didn't have systems and processes. And I was literally knocking on door for money back in 08, 09. It was, it was, it was crazy. Um, and then I kind of pivoted to the paper business. And once I put the systems and processes together to manage um, you know, rental properties, I dive back into that. So let's talk about that a little bit. How are you feeling the effects of that? I know it's still early. Um, you know, the money is still stimulating the economy, all these stimulus checks and tax returns and all this other stuff that's out right now. Um, how is that affecting you on as far as your buying properties or selling some of the properties to kind of get that liquidity? Yeah, it's, it's a definitely been affecting us. And who knows, like you said, I, I think it's definitely going to have an effect in the long term. Um, 
luckily for us, real estate can definitely be a, a bit of an agile business. You can, you know, stop fixing and flipping and just throw in a rental portfolio. You can react a little bit quicker um, to what's going on. And there's leading indicators, you know, stock, several leading indicators that lead into how the real estate market is going to be affected. Um, so I, I, I don't know, but I don't can't imagine that it's going to be like 08 was for the real estate market. It, it, you know, it may be bad for the rest of the economy, but, you know, 08 was the, I think the first and only real estate recession that caused, caused a global recession. You know, usually the global recession trickles down to real estate. So, um, but to kind of answer your question, um, it, it definitely affected us a little bit, but nothing too bad yet. St. Louis is a pretty, is where I'm out of where we flip all our properties and where I own all my rentals. It hasn't been affected that bad. We're not stacked on top of each other like a lot of other big cities. Um, we're a little bit more spread out. The cases are down here, fortunately, um, as compared to a lot of other big cities. And the market's been resilient. I mean, it's been, it's been crazy. We had a little bit of a dip right away when no one knew what was going on, but um, the local board of realtors kind of canceled um, open houses for a while, and, but we were still selling. We, everything we sell at, at the right, I think it has to do with supply and demand, everything we sell at the right price point or put on the market at the right price point, we're still getting multiple offers. So we're getting, um, you know, anything under, anything in that 150 to $350,000 range in St. Louis, if it's done, if you're priced properly, not trying to push it, if you're priced right, um, you're going to get multiple offers on the opening weekend still. So it's been crazy here. I'm sure it's not always going to be like that, but I think that just, goes to show we're still recovering from nobody buying houses for a handful of years back, you know, several years ago. So we're still on the uptick from that. But right now we're just trying to be as agile as possible, diversifying our rental portfolio. We got the single family houses and the multifamilies. And we have uh, just starting, we have a, a small um, storage facility. We just purchased another storage facility with some land next to it. We're gonna, we're gonna build out some, you know, a boat and RV storage and some, and some cover storage as well. So just kind of stay in the real estate space but diversify enough to where we're, you know, if, if one bar is down a little bit, the other ones are kind of carrying that. And then we have the active income with the flips where how we've adjusted is we're not doing any 70, 80, $90,000 um, rehabs anymore. Cause those obviously take longer time. We're trying to stick to just cosmetic surface stuff, uh, you know, under $30,000 rehabs, we can be in and out in less than a month. Cause it's very unlikely that the month is going to, or that the real estate is going to change that much in a month. You know, it takes time to even, even back then you, you properties lose, at least in St. Louis, they lose, you know, 20, 30% value. It happened over a couple of years. It didn't happen overnight here. Um, can't speak for other markets. So just trying to be in and out as quick as possible on our flips and diversify our foundation with our rental portfolio and passive income that way. Let me ask you a question on it. You, you mentioned your construction costs. I struggle with that a lot um, as far as trying to get properties where the construction are low, lower, uh, lower in rehab costs. So my average renovation is 100 grand. Okay. Right. People who's like, you know, run away from that. I'm in a different market though. My average uh, property is the oh, same between 250, 300,000 for rental uh, flips. I was doing high end flips, a uh, million dollars, 750,000. Now I'm down to sub 350, capping out at 350, lower in home, uh, different area, lower income area. Uh, I believe that's where the buyer pool is going to be. So I'm, I sw- I shift my buying, uh, my buy box to that um that strategy. But my question for you is how for your rental stuff, like if you're going in and you're doing a quick rehab, you know, does that give you any kickback on your rental portfolio? If you go in and say, oh, this is a light rehab, because, you know, I try to go in and gut the place out, do new plumbing, new electrical, everything new, because I know this is something that's going to be in a portfolio for a very long time. And if I do everything new, top to bottom, HVAC is less maintenance. Um, you know, I can pretty much charge a tenant if it's toilet clogged because I know I got new PVC in there. So how are you? How are you making out with that? Is it just the flips where you're sculling down on the renovation costs, and you you see yourself spending more in your rental portfolio that you're holding for the long haul? How does that play out? Yeah, so um, it's a great question. So we kind of filter our uh, properties that we add to our rental portfolio that don't need a ton of work. Um, we're going to add to our rental portfolio if a lot of the big stuff started taken care of. If the system's a couple years old, if the roof's newer, if you know all the a lot of the bigger things are taken care of, then we'll turn and burn that quickly, um, improve it, and then throw in a rental portfolio. We we do everything with the the burn method where where we you know appraise out don't to use any of our own money. So on our rentals, we're making sure that they're that quick turn. If they need more than that. Um, there's the, the rental portfolio in the market that the price point is is the same right now. You know, our rental portfolio is more like a hundred to one hundred seventy five thousand, and our retail stuffs you know usually a little bit more than that. You know, up to that three hundred fifty thousand price point when we sell it. 
But um, yeah, if it needs if it needs more than that, like I said, if it needs if it needs a new system, needs new plumbing, needs new roof, new windows, everything that needs to be new, we're putting that much into it. Um, we're probably going to go ahead and sell that. But if it, if it needs a quicker turn and burn, then we're going to we'll, we'll probably add to the portfolio if, if it doesn't need as much work. And that's just kind of filtering it. We have you know five different after it gets in our funnel, we have five different extra strategies. You know, the first one is to we want to keep our active income as high as possible right now because we're not taking anything from our rentals. We're just growing the equity as much as we can and keeping the money in the business. So our first option is to rehab it if it fits our rehab box. If not, we'll keep as a rental. If not, then we'll try and um, wholesale it or just list it on the MLS if it's in good enough shape. So it just kind of depends on, that's a great question. It just kind of depends on the, the condition of the property and, and what, what our different crews are at at the time. Awesome. Now on a, on a, on, a, on another side with challenges, because we all you know, a lot of us are successful in a lot of stuff we do and, and a lot of that come with experience, but what, what type of challenges do you run through, you know, as an operator doing real estate, you know, you have, you know, a lot of success since you started with all the doors, all the, you know, hundred plus uh, houses you flip in a year. What, what are some of the things that you've experienced over the years that's been really a challenge? Is it scalability? Is it scaling to be uh, better than scaling to be bigger? Um, you know, is it the people? finding good people like what what are some of the pain points and challenges that you have in your business that you really try to um you know develop processes so you won't be caught in the bottleneck you know of that how much time do you have just kidding <laughs> we, uh, we we definitely have had our fair share of challenges um i'll just kind of work through a couple my biggest one right now is time um trying to get this education business off the ground and creating youtube videos and doing live streams and trying to trying to get through that as, as well as possible but then also um, we obviously have great people hired for each business but also i you know manage our acquisition guys we have four full-time buyers and then i, I kind of have the last say in our marketing um, so i kind of handle that side of the flipping company then the rental company um, we have a couple of people that deal with uh, tenants and maintenance and leasing and i, I kind of don't do as much there but it, it's more of just trying to i i kind of tend to struggle with trying to do too many things and I feel like I can do several things well, but um, it's probably smarter to pick, you know, three or four and do them really well as opposed to trying to do seven or eight things kind of well. So that's kind of a, a personal struggle for me wanting to just always kind of grow and, and always evolve, which is good, but you can't do that until you get, you know, this company is set to kind of run without me, this company is set to run without me and this company, you know, you kind of got to get that set. I kind of tend to, to jump it a little bit and um, try and try and, you know, do too much at a time. And, you know, some things may slip, you, you know, something that I should have done a little bit better. I get it done, but it's the last minute or it's not quite right. So that that's part of the, part of the struggle. And then it's always, always struggling with, with people with, you know, the few different companies that we do have having dealing with, you know, people issues or somebody having an issue here or, or leaving. And or recently it's been, you know, this COVID stuff, having, we set everything up for people could work from home. We had to get all the zoom accounts for everyone set up, make sure they had cameras, you know, just, there always seems to be something when you're involved in so many different businesses, always somebody tugging at your sleeve. You don't want to, you don't want to let the ball drop for the, the people that are working for you and with you. You want to be there for them, but you also need to, you know, be able to, to properly manage everything that you got coming your way. Do you see yourself now that the single family market is obviously stronger than the, than the multifamily market? People are jumping out, running to single family homes because they want more space. Do you see that? I mean, in your marketplace, there's plenty of single family stuff that you product that you have as far as turning into rentals. And I, I think that business is going to boom as people migrate from the multifamilies. Um, do you see yourself uh, now that COVID-19 hit transitioning to certain sectors of the real estate business like are you are you still going to be gung-ho for multifamily? Or are you just going to now just focus on the, the bread and butter single family stuff since that's where the most volume is going to be what type of pivots are you guys looking to make from this uh covid 19 thing yeah that's a that's a great question we're kind of in discussions in that right now because our original plan for a rental company was um you know, because that's like you said, that's more the long term play as opposed to the, the flips and we can just wholesale if we want to get away from flips. So that's a little bit more agile, but you're in and out of those. But the, the rental company, you, you're 100 percent spot on. Our, our goal was originally 50 single family houses and then just exponentially grow our multifamilies um, about midway through last year. We saw how I like how liquid the single family stuff is. You can sell them quickly, a lot quicker. You can sell the multifamilies. Um, 
but you are your value is based on the, the market. So you know each one has its pros and cons. But we decided we want 100 single families, and then we'll still grow our, our uh, multifamilies. But now we're we're in talks. You're right. I mean, the, I think the multifamily space is just going to fluctuate like anything else. I I think we're at an all time high. I mean, the industry of multifamily permits around the country. I think I've seen that the the data um, on that. So they're they've been building multifamilies like crazy recently. So that was kind of the hot trend, but now you're right. I think with COVID-19, people are going to want more space. They're not going to want to be so close to everybody. They're going to want to breathe a little bit, maybe move out a little bit farther. So we are evaluating right that right now, maybe um, not doing as many multifamilies. I think we'll still do it if the numbers make sense. They're, they're pretty hard to come by or they had been recently, but I think we are going to focus a little bit more on adding some single family rentals. I love the fact that they're so liquid, they cash flow a little more. Um, they're spread out potentially, so there could be harder to manage. And but the, the tenants seem to we have less issues collecting rents from our um, from our single families than our multifamily. So there you know there's a give and take with both of them. But I do think we're going to pivot our portfolio a little bit heavier to the. I think we were wanting an end game of maybe 20, 25 percent single families and the rest multifamilies. But we we may try to do more 50 50 going forward. Just kind of let it play out. We're not trying to react too much to anything that's going on right now with COVID nineteen or anything. We're just trying to sit back. We didn't let any of our staff go. We didn't do anything like that. We just kind of cut marketing for a little bit and just let everything kind of marinate and then try to make decisions coming out of this. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I have two boys, one 17 and one 12, and they always ask me, how come you have all these individual properties instead of just getting one big building with all your problems in one space? You can have 500 units and everything else. And I contemplated it for a while. I said maybe five years ago, I was about to pivot into multifamily. I said, you know what, let me just stick with what I'm doing. For one of the reasons that you mentioned um, that you just said, you know, you can liquidate, you know, uh, single assets. You don't have to sell the entire building to get capital out. So I've always wondered how do people who own all these big multifamilies, you know, of course you can refinance and pull cash out, but you know, you might not want to sell the building. You might want to keep on keeping it when it, when you have individual single family properties or multifamily rentals, twos and threes in my marketplace, I can sell off a couple of them to get some liquidity to take down another trade on something else. So, um, that's one of the reasons I never went into it, but I, I think that it's, it's still a great investment. Just if it's purchased right, um, you know, we'll see what that market, what that market is going to end up at. It'd be very interesting. Hopefully, it, it works out well. I know a lot of people bought at the top of the market. A lot of people are over leveraged, so a lot of that stuff is going to start. You know, you're going to see who was swimming naked. You know, so that's you know what I'm saying. That's going to happen soon. Um, yeah. So this this education stuff. This is the last thing I want to get into. A few questions on that because I had an education hat on before and, and every once in a while, I definitely would all the time. And that's one of the reasons I set up social media. And the reason I'm doing this is to kind of share my knowledge and experience with people, right? Pay it forward. Um, but every once in a while I'll come out of retirement and I'll do like an educational course on mortgage notes and everything else. And we just finished one for six weeks uh, a couple of weeks ago, but um, let's talk about that. What made you actually want to get into that business? I mean, it's easy because you have the knowledge you could just, regurgitated and, and saying people, I can tell from talking to you that you're active in the business. One thing I don't like is educators who are not active in the business, who really can't, you know, they just talking surface stuff. They're not actively doing it. What made you want to, to pivot and, and get involved with that education? Talk a little bit about exactly what your plans are with the education. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, honestly, that was part of it is a lot of these people coaching other people charging an arm and a leg and they're not doing it anymore they did it 10 years ago and you know they're just regurgitating a course they created 10 years ago and things have changed and it's just frustrating seeing um, a lot of that out there and we we really really do like to help people all our stuff we're just we're just launching everything um all our stuff that we're doing is is extremely inexpensive which a lot of it's free and it's just it's just fun to do that and teach other people and help people get to that to that place where they're um where they're financially free. So there's, I mean, it's, it's just, it's, and it's fun. And the, the, one of the biggest factors for me was when you own real estate, you, you have a lot of overhead. Our, I think our, our flipping team, um, I think uh, it's like 60 grand a month in overhead. And then our rentals, obviously we have overhead with mortgages and all that stuff. So those are a lot more overhead, a little more risk in the education business. Um, you have your knowledge. That's not really a physical overhead. You know, I do, we don't have a big staff right now or anything like that. It's just basically finding different channels, different ways to teach our knowledge and to teach what we're doing. So it's, it's less risky of a business to get in. Honestly, if you've got a 
you got to shut down or, or pivot, it's pretty simple to do as opposed to, you know, some of these other bigger machines. So that was, that was kind of a draw of it. Um, and it, it's just, it, it's, it's fun. It's fun to teach people stuff and to, to have people, to help people get to that point to where they can retire early or they can retire better or they can just get an extra couple grand a month coming in or save up for a nice vacation. It's, it's just fun to do and it's fun to create the content. We just launched the YouTube channel, um, maybe two months ago and it, it's just it's slowly growing. I know that's kind of stuff takes time, but it's fun making the videos, being goofy, um, you know, showing our personality a little bit more. Um, you know, there's a certain vanity to having yourself out there and on, you know, it's just kind of fun to, to see yourself out yeah. there. Yeah. That. But you know what I mean? Just being, having that. So it's, it's just fun more than anything at this point. And it just kind of creates another stream of income trying to, you know, create as many streams as I can. Absolutely, um, man. That's, that's great. What, what is the name of the, of the education? What is the name of the thing? It's Faster Freedom. So it's on YouTube, it's Faster Freedom. On Instagram and on Facebook, it's all just uh, Faster Freedom. Faster Freedom. I'm on IG right now. I'm going to try to... Faster Freedom. Yeah, let me try. One oh, word. Can. It probably shows up as two word, but it's one word. Oh, I see it right here. Faster Freedom. Yep. Get some hashtags. Okay. I'm f I just followed you. Awesome. Appreciate yeah, that. Just followed you. So yeah, we just, awesome. just kind of launched all that not too long ago. I think all our, all of our social media stuff, I um, mean, YouTube is probably a couple months old. So we're slowly working towards getting a following. Yeah, I see, man. You're getting up there. All right. All right. I got, I got to do some work. I've been on, on Instagram for maybe a year and a half now. And uh, I, got, I think I got like 200 and something posts. And my youngest son was like, you got to step it up. You're supposed to have at least a thousand posts by now. We got to start posting every day. I was like, this is work, man. This is like, I'll, share all, <laughs> I'll share all the stuff we're doing now and all my stuff and we'll help each other grow. All right. That's what's up. Yeah. Give, give your handles and, and let everybody know how they can contact you. I definitely appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing your, your wisdom and knowledge, man. And I'm, I'm pretty impressed starting off in 2014 and you know, to be where you are. And again, I just want to reiterate that I know it's through a lot of processes and systems that are put in place to help you scale, because if you don't have that in place, guys, you're, you're really just, you know, running on a treadmill. It, it takes a lot of work and energy and, and building those processes and systems definitely is important. It's something that we actually going through now, um, you know, the whole EOS pro systems and all that other stuff, um, I think is important, but yeah, go ahead. Shout, shout yourself out and let everybody know where they can find you at and what you got going on. Yeah, no, that, that EOS thing is something we did uh, about a couple of years ago. That is awesome. The visionary, yeah. the integrator, all that kind of stuff. That, that's a huge, huge way to help systemize things. Because if you get something systemized, it takes a little bit more work up front, but then you can free. That's the reason we're doing three things. If, if, if I wasn't systemized, I'd only be able to do one right now. So, yeah. um, but that's no, a great point. Yeah, just uh, we'd love to reach out and contact anybody. Um, our handle on everything is just faster freedom, one word. If you want to get a hold of me, um, go into Instagram or Facebook and just shoot me a message. I'm um, at faster freedom on Facebook and Instagram and then YouTube. That's really what we're pushing right now. We're, we're going to be launching. We're just launching a webinar, a weekly webinar where we're um, teaching how to grow a rental portfolio, single family rentals. We're going to do a boot camp. We're going to do all that kind of stuff in the future, but I'm not really worried about that. I just want to, uh, you know, help as many as we can through our YouTube channel. And if, if somebody wants to look further into it, contact us through Instagram or um, Facebook and just, just check out our channel, Faster Freedom on YouTube and just enjoy the content. Ask me any questions you want on there. I'm the one that's responding to all the questions personally. So um, just comment on there, like it, and subscribe. We'd really appreciate getting to know everybody and, and help, helping you get to anywhere you want to be in, in through real estate, whether it be in the St. Louis market or, or any market. You know, there's a, the different market at different price points, but real estate investing works in any market. You just got to know your numbers. That's awesome, man. Sam Prem, Faster Freedom. I appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Um, and this is a really good interview. I learned a couple of things as well. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Awesome. Another great Another great episode, PFREI. I'm your host, Fukan Bilal. Be sure to catch us on Instagram, Twitter, and all other social media handles.